Corporate or commercial? One of the biggest decisions any pilot has to make, whether they're just thinking about getting into aviation or are already in an established career, is whether the corporate side of aviation or the commercial side is better for them. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the pros and cons of both, discuss things like pay, schedule, and quality of life, and hopefully help you make it a better decision for yourself. Hello everyone and welcome to the Pilot Pots YouTube channel. My name is Michael. I have been a corporate pilot flying professionally for about seven years now. And although I absolutely love my job, I'm continually weighing the pros and cons of corporate versus commercial. Now, before I get into the video, I have to ask you to please hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and as the YouTubers say, smash that like button. I'm just trying to please the algorithm gods and get this channel started growing. So please do what you can to help me out. Now that that's done with, let's get into the discussion of corporate versus commercial. I'm going to try to break this video down of comparing apples to apples as much as I can, but that can be pretty difficult. There are a lot of different numbers for both corporate and commercial out there. I will link down below to some of the websites that I use to gather information on pay and schedule. A lot of the information I'm gonna share also just comes from talking to other pilots. I have a ton of friends who are on the airline side and have done commercial their entire career. And then like myself, I am very familiar with the corporate side and what it has to offer. I'll start by saying that either corporate or commercial can offer amazing careers. In general, this probably goes along with most jobs that you do, but the earlier you can start, the better. If you get started in the corporate side of things, you can move up the ladder faster. For myself, if you have watched some of my other videos of how I became a corporate pilot, I was fortunate enough to know that that's what I wanted to do from the very beginning. So getting into that early has allowed me to get into a really good position as a captain and check airman for my company at a relatively young age and I'm set up to have a pretty good career here. On the commercial side of things, you will always hear talked about seniority, seniority, seniority. And that means the sooner you can get in, the better. Because at the airlines, although they care about you, you are a number and your schedule and your pay and your quality of life greatly depends on what number in the seniority list you are. Now that being said, age should not be a factor necessarily on whether you are considering a career in aviation. A couple numbers to throw out there to start is 65 years old, which is the mandatory retirement age for part 121, which is the airline world. Now on the corporate side of things, there is not a mandatory retirement age. So I will start by saying, if you are possibly on the older side of things, maybe 50, 45 to 50 starting out, by the time that you put your time in at an airline and gain the seniority to have a really good schedule a nice paycheck and kind of benefit from the quality of life items, you may be inching up on that 65 year old number. I'll kind of start there by comparing the two. If you are looking to get into a career in aviation at a relatively older age, corporate might be the better route. And we'll get into the pay and schedule that goes along with that and I can describe why. Now the comparison I'm gonna do between commercial and corporate first is the one that probably most people care about the most, which is money. So let's talk about money and how you get paid through commercial and corporate and which one might be better for you. Starting on the airline side, I'm gonna assume that you would have the hours and the qualifications to get hired at both a corporate and commercial, but as a starting out pilot. So if you start in airlines or the commercial side of things, you're most likely gonna be going to a regional airline. The regional airlines are the smaller airlines out there flying regional jets, the 50 to 90 passenger jets on commuter routes. Now, all commercial airlines pay their pilots by the hour. So you get an hourly starting wage, possibly as low as $32, $30 an hour all the way up to a starting range of maybe 45 or 46 bucks an hour. 
depending on which regional you go to. Airlines also have a monthly minimum that is your guarantee for the amount of hours you'll get paid for. Each airline is definitely gonna vary a little bit with their monthly guarantee, but for this example, I'm gonna use 75 hours as the generic monthly guarantee. Using these numbers, a pilot on the low end of things, starting at maybe $32 an hour, working the minimum guarantee of 75 hours a month for an entire year, is only gonna be bringing home about $32,000 on their paycheck pre-taxes. Now, if you're on the higher end of things, a little bit for that first year of about $45 an hour with the guarantee of 75 hours for an entire year, you're gonna be just over about $40,000 for the year. And again, that's a pre-tax number. One nice thing with the airlines is generally, if you do want to make more money, you can work more and get higher hours or credited more hours for a month. Still, if a pilot was able to credit about 90 hours a month for an entire year, on the low end of things, they would still be around that $40,000 mark. And on the high end of things, maybe getting close to about $50,000 a year. Now, these are both considering just the hourly amount that you're gonna make. Some other factors that different airlines may throw in there are signing bonuses, there's been different retention bonuses, but aviation is a constantly changing market, so these bonuses may or may not be there when you're looking at entering a career. So now that we've talked about the starting pay on the airline side at a regional airline, let's talk about the corporate starting pay. Similar to the airlines where you're most likely gonna start out on a smaller airplane, like at a regional, on the corporate side, you're most likely gonna start on a small to mid-sized jet. Now, corporate companies generally pay one of two ways. One is just gonna be a salary, for the entire year, so you're gonna make the same amount regardless of how much you fly. The other way that some companies do is a day rate. So depending on how much you fly, similar to an hourly rate, you can work more to get paid more or work less to get a little bit less. Corporate salaries are a little bit harder to break down, but for the ease of this, I would call a corporate starting salary somewhere between $45,000 and $60,000 a year. I personally started out on the Hawker 900 at $60,000 a year as a first officer. Now, granted that was in California, so it might've been a little low, but that was kind of on the high end of things. You may be able to find some jobs starting higher than that. There are some corporate companies out there that advertise starting their first officers at $100,000 a year. But in order to actually make that amount, you would have to work a ridiculous amount and hit every single productivity bonus they have, which isn't really realistic for most pilots. So looking at the first, say, five years of someone's career, you're gonna start seeing a few differences. On the airline side, the first five years of a regional airline first officer are gonna be relatively the same as far as your hourly rate. Now, a lot of the hourly rates, you will see a jump from year one to year two, but in your first five years, you're probably only gonna see maybe a 10 to $15,000 difference on your yearly income over those first five years. On the corporate side of things, you may see a little bit bigger of a jump and you're also starting at a higher point. So corporate in general, I would say, is gonna start at a higher salary. Now what we're gonna get into next is the final salary that you get, which is where airlines will definitely come in and kinda of lay the smack down on corporate. So after your first few years at a regional, you could have a couple different options. Depending on how airline hiring is going, you could have the option to go to a major airline who would be hiring first officers with no captain experience necessary, or you could upgrade a captain within your regional airline. A airline captain, for the regionals would be starting somewhere between 70,000 to 80,000 on the very low end of the scale, all the way up to maybe about $150,000 a year for a regional airline captain. The other option, which is definitely financially better for you, is to go to a major airline. Now, major airlines pay a lot of money and they're kind of known for it. Most major airline first officers their first year is gonna be a little bit lower, but you see a substantial jump in your second year, especially after recent contract negotiations. Pretty much every major airline's second year first officer pay is now over $100,000.
So your first year at a major airline is most likely gonna be around the 60 to $70,000 range. But of course, if you wanted to work a little bit more, you could to get that income up. Now your second year, pretty much every single major airline is gonna be over $100,000, which is a nice bump. On the corporate side of things, one plus side to corporate is that generally the opportunity to upgrade is gonna happen a lot faster. Corporate companies do have seniority and respect that, but they don't care as much about the time that you've been with the company. If they can get you in as a captain, they would love to do that. Most corporate companies are gonna start their captains around the 90 to $100,000 mark and increase maybe 10 to 15% a year. With both corporate and commercial, they can be very lucrative careers, but airlines do take the edge on say a 15 or better year career. A long tenured airline captain can easily start topping $300,000 a year all the way up to 350 or 400,000 if they are able to credit trips the right way. It is pretty ridiculous. Now a corporate captain, say you have been in corporate aviation for 15 or 20 years, you can also be in a really good spot. Hopefully if you've been around that long, you've been able to network well, you've been able to get into a really nice airplane so you're flying a large cabin jet or have gotten connected with a really generous owner and a corporate captain could easily be getting up to the $250,000 a year mark but they have to kind of have things fall their way a little bit better. On the light jet side of things, a corporate captain, which would be kind of similar to staying as a regional captain, you're gonna be probably around the 140 to 150,000 mark, 10 to 15 years into your career. Corporate, if you look at large cabin or bigger aircraft is kind of comparative to the major airlines, whereas the smaller and mid-sized jets are more like the regional. Now, one of the biggest differentiators between corporate and commercial is the stability of your schedule. An airline schedule is generally gonna offer you a lot more stability month to month and allow you to plan your life a little bit more, whereas corporate is known and kind of makes their money by being on demand and going when people wanna go and where they want to go to. Airlines set their own schedules and decide where their airplanes are gonna go and corporate is the mercy of their clients. Now, this can be a pro or a con depending on where you are in your life, whether you have kids, whether you have other things going on, and it can be really exciting, but it can also be stressful and kind of a downside to corporate. At an airline, your monthly schedule that you're assigned is generally not gonna have more than a four day on trip at a time. The scheduling software that airlines use is usually pretty sophisticated, so if you really wanted one specific date off, you could filter through all your schedules and bid for any line that has that specific day off and most likely get it. Corporate, you are really gonna be at the mercy of your company of how they run their schedule. My company, I am very fortunate that they have a airline type schedule where we bid on our schedules and your seniority matters a little bit, but there are a lot of corporate companies that expect their pilots to be on call the majority of the time. So on the corporate side of things, the schedules can definitely vary a little bit more company to company, but in general, corporate pilots are going to stay on the road a little bit longer, but then also have longer blocks of days off following that. So standard corporate companies will have anywhere from five days on to 10 days on in a row, but those are also followed by anywhere from five to 10 days off. One of the standard schedules you will see in corporate is a week on and a week off, or a eight on and a six off. A difference between corporate and commercial is that you look at days on instead of an actual schedule of flights. A lot of times corporate companies don't know what flights are gonna be on the schedule for a particular day. And with some flights popping up as little as two hours before, you don't really know exactly where you're gonna be going. Again, this can be a really fun and exciting part of corporate, but if you aren't able to deal with that and deal with the variability, 
then airline schedules might be better for you. Some of the pros on the commercial side is that you have that set schedule, you know well in advance exactly what trips you're doing, when they are, when you're gonna be home, and you can really plan your life out around that. Commercial can also help if you really need specific days off or you want to tailor your schedule to be home at specific times. And especially as you build seniority, you can really get your schedule to where you know exactly when you're gonna be home. And that can be really useful if you do have a family with kids or a wife or husband that works and you need to try to get your schedule in sync with theirs. On the corporate side of things, some of the pros to the schedule are that with the longer blocks of days on and days off, if you use your vacation time or PTO time correctly, you can actually end up with as much as three or four weeks off in a row without having to use all your vacation time or do much with your schedule. The longer blocks of days off can really be nice if you do wanna go on a vacation or spend time at home but it's gonna be longer blocks of days on in front of that. As goes with pay and schedules, do your research on what companies you're looking at because different companies are gonna offer different things and you really wanna evaluate what you have going on in your own life and see what would work best for you. Now, apart from those, let's talk about some of the other aspects of commercial and corporate that make it more or less enjoyable. Starting on the corporate side, I can definitely name a lot of really awesome things that make corporate a blast as a job. I think the best thing that corporate has going for it is the type of flying that you get to do when you're at a corporate company versus commercial. Corporate clients, just being a wealthy type of individual, generally are going to nicer destinations than a commercial airline pilot will go to. Commercial airlines obviously fly in to very nice destinations, but your overnights usually aren't that much time, whereas with corporate, you could luck out and get what I call a vacation trip, where you ended up in an amazing destination for multiple days and honestly get to kind of go on a vacation on your own. Corporate is also flying what I think are nicer airplanes than airlines. Although airlines are always getting new airliners, the airplanes generally aren't gonna be kept to the same level of niceness as a corporate jet will. Our corporate jets are cleaned meticulously after every single flight and they're really nice airplanes and really fun to fly. One of the biggest reasons I got into corporate aviation was because of the client interaction that you get with corporate as well. I usually relate corporate aviation to being like a limo driver and airlines to being like a bus driver. At the corporate level, you're gonna get a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with the people you're flying, which I really enjoy. I honestly couldn't really care less if they are a famous person or just a business owner or just whoever it is, doesn't really matter to me, but it's fun to take that personal touch and take that time to make sure that the, your customer service is really up there. The hospitality aspect is something that each person is gonna have to judge for themselves how much interest they have in it. But for me, I really like that and I like giving that level of service. Although I'm probably pretty biased, I would say that corporate pilots generally have a little bit more fun while they're working. Airlines are more geared towards having a great personal life and outside of work, you can really get some good benefits. While corporate can offer those good benefits while you're not flying, while you actually are flying the airplane and at work, Corporate is a lot more fun. You get to go to better destinations, fly better equipment, and interact with people in a much better way than airlines offer. This is definitely a big plus for the corporate side of things that can honestly offset some of the income that you lose by not going to the airlines. Although money can be a primary driving factor of comparing them side by side, I would recommend not just looking at that number and not to get into too much personal finance things, but how you handle your money and what you invest in and what you kind of choose to do to grow your nest egg. And maybe you have a spouse that does really well and money is not necessarily the only driving factor. 
the quality of life and the mental health that you'll get from being at a job you really enjoy is important. And I think corporate can offer that as far as making it a really good work environment, which at airlines, I think a lot of the people I talk to find themselves more in a rut of just a standard routine and they don't necessarily enjoy going to work all the time. To try to kind of wrap this up and summarize everything, on the pay side of things, corporate is generally gonna be a little bit better starting out, but airlines and especially a major airline will definitely end up giving a better paycheck towards the end of your career. Corporate, you can find really good jobs and really well-paying jobs but you have to talk to the right people and maybe find your way into the correct situation. Where at airlines, if you're there long enough and work yourself into a major airline, you're gonna get a really good paycheck. Schedule is gonna be kind of up to you on what works best with your life. An airline is gonna be very structured and allow you to plan your life a little bit better. Corporate, on the other hand, is more variable, which can be fun and exciting, but tougher to hold a life at home and really plan things out with your family and friends. As far as quality of life, again, this is gonna be something that every person is gonna have different for them, but corporate is gonna often offer a more exciting life as far as the destinations you're flying to and the enjoyment that you have when you're working with the clients you're flying and actually going to work. It's easier to get into a rut with commercial and kind of just feel like you're only a number. In corporate, you can have a much more personal touch, which I really enjoy, and for the right type of person, it can make your life much more enjoyable because you absolutely love your job. As far as me, here's the reasons why I picked corporate. I absolutely love the customer interaction. I really enjoy the hospitality aspect of it and providing a level of customer service and kind of taking ownership of what the experience of the customer is on board, which I feel like you don't get as much with the airlines. Also for me, the variability of a corporate schedule is actually kind of fun. I enjoy not knowing where I'm gonna end up and sometimes it can definitely get on my nerves, but I enjoy going on trips where I know where I'm starting out, but after that, I have no idea. It makes it really fun. One of the aspects of corporate I still really enjoy is that I get to do more of the planning and have a little bit more decision-making power than I would at a commercial airline. I still am the one that is filing most of the flight plans and get to make the decisions in the air. With commercial, you have point A to point B and if there's weather in the way or the airplane is having issues or other variables, you don't have that many options. Either you're going or you're not going. And once you go, you know exactly what airport you're going to. Where with corporate, if there's weather or issues at one specific airport, I can make the decision to go to another airport and just make it happen. I like having my hands on doing things like fuel planning and performance planning, which the airlines is kind of just handed to you, which can be a really nice aspect of them. But for me, I like having my hands on it. When I was first looking at going to corporate or commercial, I was also looking at the starting pay. For me, I knew that I could make a lot more starting in corporate than I could in commercial. Now, back when I was getting into the industry, the regional airline pay was kind of laughably low, still around $20,000 a year which was ridiculous. So me being able to go into corporate making 60 a year was a substantial jump. And if you know anything about personal finance and prepping yourself for life, getting started early and being able to invest money at that very base young age, the sooner you can get into that, the better. So even though you make more down the line at a airline, you could actually end up with more in your investments if you play your money right, getting started in corporate earlier. Now, all this being said about corporate, I have to be honest, I have not ruled out the airlines by any means. For now, I just have my wife, I have two dogs and no kids right now. The variability is something that I can deal with, but I've definitely had my frustrations with ASAP calls. It can make it hard to schedule plans with friends and family and the longer trips that I go on, going on a week-long trip 
can not be ideal at some times. Airlines, the ultimate salary that you get and the benefits can really be impressive. But at this time, I honestly couldn't be happier with corporate. I'm in a really good position with my company. I have pretty good seniority. I'm able to manipulate my schedule to fit my own personal schedule and the pay is pretty darn good. Let me know in the comments down below what other questions you have about commercial or corporate and I would love to either make new videos about them, covering more topics, because I know you could go on and on and on, or I'll answer down in the comments and try to provide as much direction as I can. If you made it this far in this video, thank you so much for sticking around. I really hope that I could break down a few of the things that I see in the difference between commercial and corporate, and hopefully it helps you make a better decision. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.